This message is about forgiveness, so let me just, you know, make a pro public display. I do forgive you for not opening the window last night. It was so hot. Uh, the, the weather changed, and I'm like, I, I, was, I was also sleeping beside a 102 fevered, you know, she's the size of a toddler. She's just so little. But, I mean, whenever your kids have a temperature, they radiate like, it's not 102 degrees. It's like a sauna. It's awful. And she had to be right there next to you. So eventually I peeled her off and laid her on the floor. But yeah, as he's soundly sleeping through all of it. So I forgive you. You're welcome. So we are in the series, The Grudge Match. And this week we are discussing forgiveness. So he goes... So your, your topic of hand is forgiveness. Thanks. Because um, forgiveness is never easy, right? Maybe it is for some of you. So let me give you a story. Two, it'll be three summers this summer. My oldest daughters were out in the lake having a glorious time, uh, just absolutely slamming each, under, each other underwater, trying to show each other up you know, handstands or whatever, because the water was really shallow a long way out. To which Liberty nailed Grace with the heel of her foot right in the eye three weeks before her freshman year of high school. <laughs> and I mean, that's a good picture. Like, it swelled shut. You should have seen the colors the next day. It was fantastic. I did not know... I did not know your face could have that many colors. And that's the only picture I think we have. But, we have oh, they're, yeah, they're gross. I, it's, it was so bad that they, they had to check and make sure that, they, that she did not, like, break the orbital socket. And because um, she kicked her so hard. And it wasn't intentional, but you would have thought it was because of the reaction, because teenagers are dramatic, especially girls. So we have this wonderful display of sisterly love and we go to Boston to which I'm not sure if people on the tee were more afraid of us because we looked like the abusers as parents or if they were more afraid of grace because she you know looked like she showed somebody the world I don't know but I mean like again every color of the rainbow she she had probably like cracked this bone right here from what they said but they did not want to take an x-ray just to be cautious because everything was the way it should be. And she broke the blood vessels and the whites of her eyes. So her eye was that, you know, it looked, it was gross. Like it, the white of her eyes was just filled with blood. And this lasted for what, seven or eight weeks? Did you know that to get that cleared out, it takes forever? And she held that over Liberty's head because of class pictures, because of freshman pictures, because of homecoming, and she just held it, oh, you owe me, you owe me. And this went on for two months. So how many of us realize that forgiveness is important? This was a very valuable lesson in forgiveness for my older daughters that really it was just accidental, but sometimes even in accidental things, there needs to be forgiveness, right? It can be an accident, but sometimes we still need to apologize. Like the person that just about pummels you over trying to get into the store and they're just not paying attention. There should still be forgiveness there. In Luke 17, it says this, Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. If they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times you come back saying, come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Okay. It, forgiveness can be exhausting at moments. Sometimes there are moments where we want to forgive somebody but it, is, it takes everything physically and emotionally about us to do that. And we're going to get into this a little bit. 
Seven is a number that speaks of completeness. God finished his work, and he rested on the seventh day. Essentially, using the number seven indicates the completeness of forgiveness. That's why Jesus talks about seven times, and that's not an easy thing. Many of us, if not all of us, really need repetition of forgiveness in our life. So, let's pray, okay? Father, I thank you that we can be in your house. I thank you that you can use even me to speak your word this morning. And God, I pray that you would just take your word and make it stand strong for the people to understand and grasp and use to help better their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In Matthew 5, 44, 33, it says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Cool, right? Love your enemies. So I grew up with a saying. Let me think about how my dad used to put it. Smother your... Um, okay, so how did he go? He would talk about, like, people that would just, like, pick and pick and pick and pick on you. And... I was getting really annoyed with somebody in junior high school, and I remember talking to my dad about this, and he goes, kill him with love. Literally, literally just kill him with love. I'm like, I don't love this person. I don't even like this person. But he would, he would encourage me to kill them with love, meaning do everything that you can do in your power to still love this person, even if they are nasty to you. All right, when you're 13... Those words are kind of fleeting, but as an adult, when I look back on that, I realize the lesson that he was trying to teach me at the time was to love your enemy, even though they're the enemy. My dad was a military man. His job was quite obvious, but he also has to, for himself, love the enemy. It's not an easy thing, not for anybody. Now, most of us in here have never been in the military. We don't know that example, but most of us in this room would have an enemy. And it's very hard to love somebody, especially when they've hurt you. It's also very hard to forgive them. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Hmm. So we can look at this verse. We can sum it up. These are, these are what we need. This is what we need to do. Be kind and compassionate to one another. We can sum this up going, okay, Christ forgave me. I can do this too. And we think that we've achieved forgiveness, right? All right, I can be kind and compassionate until that person walks in front of us and we're like, oh, I just want to stick it to them. Oh, nobody else has had that experience, just me. I mean, somebody crossed my path the other day, and I didn't even know I had a problem with them until I saw them. And I'm like, where did that come from? I mean, that was so ugly. And I'm being real, okay? We all have this moment like, oh, it was just ugly. And, and the things that came out of my mouth were ugly. And I'm going, and my teenager heard it. And she goes, Mom, what's your problem? I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't even know. I guess I was mad at that person. I didn't even know I was mad at that person until they walked in my presence. And then we make fun of it and joke, and I get sarcastic, and that never helps anything. So don't do that. Do, you know, do what the word says, not as, you know what I mean. Be kind and compassionate, forgiving each other. Okay, so thanks, Pastor. You made me bring up forgiveness. Guess where you're sleeping. <laughs> oh, good. You're stuck with Nora tonight. It's so hot. I'm just joking. <laughs> Actually, the only time we've ever slept apart was never because of an argument. It's just because somebody's out of town. So it's never easy to walk in forgiveness. Maybe it is for some of you, but for, for I would say the vast majority of us, forgiveness is a difficult subject. And some of it is because... We struggle to relate with the forgiveness that Christ gave us. We struggle to understand all of that overwhelming love 
that he had for us by dying on the cross. And we put it out of our mind like, oh, well, that's just a Jesus thing. He can do it, but I can't. And, and we kind of lose the hope of what he's asking us to do here. And we miss an opportunity. Matthew six fourteen through 15 says, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, your father will not forgive you of yours. Ooh, heavy words. Forgiveness is huge. This is why it's talked about over and over and over again, and not just the example of what Christ did, but how we also need to reflect that example. And that's difficult. So now we have escalated the situation, right? My teenagers made it a point to make each other miserable over one kicking the other in the eye and the other one rubbing it in their face for eight weeks. I was done. Like, you girls have got to stop. They were driving me crazy. So she's the one that kicked me in the face, and they still bring it up. Do you remember when you this? Do you remember when you that? I mean, teenagers can be ugly. But adults are just uglier versions with a bigger vocabulary. Oh, that's, see, somebody understood that, because that's truth, right? We've just broadened our opportunity to use other words against each other. I mean, Look at politics. You bring a whole lot of anger and unforgiveness into that, right? But within the body of Christ, what are we doing to each other when we don't forgive each other? And it can be so petty, so petty. Oh, my gosh, that lady sat in my seat at church. Really? I mean, come on, get over yourself. I almost made everybody move in here this morning just to irritate you. I seriously almost did it because you get so accustomed to where you like to be, but I almost did it just to make a point. So now you have to forgive me for thinking that. Huh. Right? We can be vindictive at time, right? <laughs> just a little. So what do we need to learn? Number one, we need to learn what, what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness does not mean forgetful. All right? Don't be stupid. I say it with love. I really do. Don't be stupid. You know, we have been hurt. We have been, there have been things that are wrong against us and that we are learning from and that we are, maybe it was a past relationship, an abusive relationship, an abusive workplace. I don't know what your situation is. But maybe you need to recall on that and look at that and realize that you have to leave that situation and never re-enter it. Maybe what you have to do is forgive the moment, the situation, the person, the job, whatever it is, but use intelligence to never put yourself in that position again. There are people that have done a lot of wrong things about us, but it doesn't mean I'm going to... 100% trust them in my life again. Jesus says to forgive. He, does, he doesn't say, go back to your abuser and trust them. Okay? You set healthy boundaries. Good. So, use your intelligence. God gave you a brain. There is a reason he gave us a brain. And within that, we need to look at the situation and become better, not bitter. This isn't a moment where you allow that to make you bitter. I have a lot of things that have happened in my life that if I allowed myself to not walk in daily forgiveness, I would be really bitter. So how many of you, and don't answer, I don't want to know. How many of you, and it could be you, I don't know, know somebody that just will not forgive someone else and they walk in that bitterness and you're watching it ruin their life. It destroys them, right? They've become so bitter over what their situation is or so bitter over their hurt or so bitter over a problem uh, that they had with somebody else, a conflict, that they allow it to make them worse instead of better because unforgiveness in your heart is going to destroy you. This is why Jesus talks about a simple principle of forgiving each other, just as he forgave you. And it's hard to forgive when you remember things. 
So for me, I have to choose sometimes daily to forgive the person that puts the trash on top of the lid of the trash can. I mean, that's just a silly thing, right? But it's irritating. And if we allow the simple things to irritate us, it snowballs into a bigger problem, doesn't it? It can. So we, we get annoyed, and then it blows up into this huge thing, and all these other things start coming out in whatever we're discussing, and you're like, gosh, I'm a horrible person. But my kids, like, they know it annoys me. I swear, they have these little bathroom trash cans with the pedals, and they're real cute. And they stick the toothpaste tube on top of the lid. Why can't you take the extra one second to push the pedal with your, you don't even have to touch it. Push the pedal and open the lid. And now I won't even deal with it. There are Clorox wipes under the sink. That is your bathroom. Go fix it. I don't have to walk in forgiveness because I no longer get mad. I make them resolve the issue. Not my bathroom. You want to live in that? It's your problem. You know, but at the same time, I was getting mad at my children for leaving toothpaste tubes or, oh, those stupid flossing sticks, you know, on the counter after they're done using it, or socks in the arm of the couch. <laughs> Mom, I don't know where any of my socks are. Really? Go look in the arm of the couch. I'm not doing it. But see, as a parent, I, can, I could be really bitter as a parent. I could be really bitter, and I could walk in unforgiveness. Now, some of this is just teachable moments, and I recognize that. Children have to learn. Some of this is I could just be really angry at my kids for being kids, all right? But I also have to recognize that sometimes their brains are under a little bit of construction, and they don't always think before they do something. But if I allowed that to make me angry and bitter and walk in a type of unforgiveness, what kind of parent am I going to be? What kind of parent is it going to be when there's a bigger situation that comes about where I need to forgive my child or my spouse or even somebody in this room? What kind of person am I if I can't even get over the socks and the couch because I can't forgive somebody for, oh, I forgot? Or, oh, I didn't mean to put that toothpaste tube on the trash can lid. We have to walk daily and choose an attitude of gentleness with forgiveness. With forgiveness. God is just. He is a just God. And just as much as the person that hurt you does not deserve forgiveness, neither do you. Neither do I. But Christ loved us so much, so much, that he gave that gift to us. What we forget is, is forgiveness is such a huge gift to us. Me forgiving somebody else is not just beneficial to them. They may not even care. But it's a gift to myself because it releases me, right? Right? We have to hope in the discovery of what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is giving to those who hurt you what the Lord gave to you. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. I do not always want to freely give forgiveness. Sometimes I want to be angry for a minute. Like the person that cuts you off when you're driving on the highway. <clears throat> all right, maybe they're in a hurry. Maybe they have something medical going on and they cut me off for a good reason. I don't really know, but it's annoying. But I have to walk and I have to choose the attitude of forgiveness. Now, that doesn't mean I'm a doormat, okay? So please hear me when I say that. That does not make any of us as Christians doormats. You do not allow people to walk all over you because you choose to walk in forgiveness. I hope you understand that. Mercy is God not giving us what we have deserved. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. 
we need to really look at that. Sometimes we believe that people deserve what they get. Oh, well, you made your bed, right? So God does not always give us what we deserve. We do not deserve salvation. We are not worthy. But God says we are. So we have to extend that. Faith must empower me to see freedom where others only see offense. Right? Sometimes we assume things that we shouldn't. We shouldn't free someone from the prison that they made themselves. But subconsciously, we hold them to an offense. Right? We have to look further. How is it going to be beneficial to my spouse if I hold something against him that he doesn't even realize he did? You've offended me. I can't think of why, but whatever. You, I, you made me preach this message on forgiveness. I'm offended. Right? But if I don't express it, I didn't want to preach on forgiveness because he knows that it's hard for me. He knows that forgiveness is hard for me. That how many of us hold grudges? That's what this whole series is about. Right? I like to hold a grudge, especially when I have not had coffee. My kids have all learned do not ask mom anything important until she has finished one cup of coffee because she will not answer in a nice way. But how many of us hold grudges? Oh, wait a minute. How many of us are holding grudges because we choose not to walk in forgiveness or offer forgiveness when we should? How many of us are lacking in what Jesus told us to do by ignoring the fact that things cause people to stumble. This is scripture. Things are going to cause you to stumble. Things are going to trip you up. It's life. It's reality. He didn't say this world was going to be perfect and you would not have any troubles. In fact, he said quite the opposite. It's not an easy journey. Nothing about walking here on this earth is going to be perfect. We have to look at it from the idea that there are things that are going to cause people to trouble, to, to stumble. And if you, your brother or sister stumbles and, and sins against you, and they come back to you and say, look, I'm really sorry, you now have an obligation to fulfill by forgiveness. Likewise, this goes both ways. Don't think of yourself as better than them because you didn't do something. We can all learn a lesson here. How many times have you're like, well, that's their problem, not my problem. And this is what I get from my teenagers. I know I'm right. Oh, girl, you better roll those eyes back in your head. See, they're not here. I can pick on them today. Right? And it's always better when dad disciplines the teenagers because mom is extremely sarcastic and I don't hold any stops. Oh, really? You want to go? Let's go. <laughs> I will annihilate you right now. And he's like, okay, go get, go, just go. <laughs> right? But see, this is why we balance each other so well. This is, this is why, thank God, because he knows. The Lord knew that I needed somebody that would hold me back a little bit and not destroy the emotions of my teenagers. <laughs> he knew. That's why he gave me Seth, right? Because he comes in and he plays cleanup. <laughs> After <laughs> but I am not ashamed to say I have had to apologize to my own children because how many of us have disciplined our children out of anger? And how many of us know that that's wrong? How many of us just learned it's wrong? It's not easy. I'm going to make mistakes too. And that's the one thing that I'm appreciative that my kids understand is, hey, look, mom and dad aren't perfect people. We're all figuring it out together. And Grace is the oldest, so she's the biggest guinea pig of them all. And then they're like, well, Nora gets away with everything. 
Well, I realize that's just not a battle I want to fight anymore. I'm sorry. And Grace goes, no, you're not, which is also true. <laughs> but we have to learn to look objectively at forgiveness. Because when we choose not to walk with an attitude of forgiveness, we are miserable people. I mean, there have been encounters with people over my life. Actually, we sat under, we sat under uh, one pastor as associates, and I'll be careful here. We sat under one pastor as associates that I realized he could not walk in daily forgiveness of anybody. And he was a very proud man, and it really grated on my nerves, like beyond grated. And my husband knew my feelings about the person, and, and it was hard because he would say, well, you, you have to love him for, for who he is. And I'm going, no, I don't. <laughs> I, I cannot love this person. But that is where you have to ask the Lord to give you his perspective, his point of view, his clear vision, because there are people that we are going to encounter in life that we may feel are unlovable. But God loves everyone, even those that we categorize as unlovable, even those that absolutely do the most detestable things in life. My father worked on, there's no kid, is he sleeping? My father worked on child pornography cases for a long time, more than 15 years. He worked on pedophile cases and various assault-type matters to minors. And he said that it is very hard to walk in forgiveness knowing what people have done, knowing the sins that they have and that my sins don't look as bad as theirs. This is a former military man, federal agent, marshal, that I, he has so many titles I can't even remember, and way too many degrees to get under, that knew the importance of walking in the forgiveness of God because of the criminals that he was arresting. And he had to understand that there had to be a separation of sin versus forgiveness versus criminal activity. He understood the importance of daily choosing the, even though he was going to arrest a person that was doing the most heinous crimes, that he had to choose in his brain, in his heart, forgiveness, or he couldn't get the job done. He had to make the choice. It was important. He had to learn that an act of love was arresting a criminal. That was part of his act of love. Not only for stopping what was happening, but protecting others from what could continue. That was an act of love, right? And what Jesus is saying here is we have to make the choice. But a lot of us don't want to. A lot of us like being angry at people. A lot of us like to sit there and stew and be vindictive and think of how we can get even a lot of us like to say, oh, well, the Lord forgave me. He'll never forgive that person. You know, the grace and mercy of God is for every person, even the ones that create the most and, and commit the most heinous crimes. There is not one person on this earth that is exempt from the love of God and the forgiveness of their sins. But see, we categorize that in our heads as people, and we choose to not walk in forgiveness. Now, I'm not telling you that this is an easy thing because we have to make a decision. And sometimes we have to choose forgiveness for the same person day after day after day after day. And make it a forced habit of, for me, it was saying, I choose to forgive so-and-so. 
I'd have to get up and do that every day for a really long time because I had to make it, it, it was more about it, my head dropping to my heart. Like I believed it in my head, but my heart didn't care. All right? And that is the importance here. When you begin to forgive not only with your brain, but the 18 inches below in your heart, you will see a change. Now, again, my teenagers, they're going to be teenagers. Am I going to have to forgive them? 100%. Are they going to grate on my, na- my nerves? Every last one. Because they're learning. But what example am I if I choose not to walk in forgiveness? If I choose not to show them the grace and mercy that the Lord showed us? What does that say of me? What does it say of you when we choose to act out of defiance or disrespect because we choose not to walk in forgiveness. How is that developing your relationship with the Lord? You're probably not, you're probably not motivated to get much further with God because you're not walking in forgiveness. And that's a scary place to be because the Lord wants to get to know you so much better. But you have to take this step. You have to let go of some things. You have to develop a stronger faith as you consider the things that you have gone through. And it's so important. Forgiveness will not change your past, but it will open wide the hope of your future. Let me say that again. Forgiveness will not change your past, but it will open wide the hope of your future. And forgiveness is freeing someone from a prison. But guess who that prison, guess who the prisoner was? It was yourself. It was yourself. It's a very difficult thing to come out on the other side of. But I assure you of this, just as we look back, when Jesus was talking to the disciple, to the disciple saying that, Things are going to cause people to stumble. Watch yourselves. If they sin against you, rebuke them. But if they repent, forgive them. And I would, I would ask you that even if somebody does not apologize or repent directly to you, choose to forgive them. Choose to forgive them. Because maybe you're in a different place with your relationship with the Lord than they are, and their heart isn't quite ready. So let's look at these questions. If you have pen and paper, you could write these down to be thinking about this week. How has God's forgiveness changed your life? How has God's forgiveness changed your life? Oh, good. Some of you can take that picture. Oh, are they all up there? Wow, you're a fast. What are some ways you can forgive and still set boundaries? Boy, that's important. So important. I am not going to intentionally put myself in a vulnerable position. Right? If you have come out of an abused situation, an abusive situation, you can forgive that person and walk in daily forgiveness. It's hard. But you have to choose not to put yourself back in that position. Set boundaries. Do you know someone struggling with a betrayal? How can you encourage them to find freedom and forgiveness? And what do you need to do to forgive someone right now? Forgiveness is hard. I did not want to preach on forgiveness because it's hard. It's hard for me. I have to choose this every day. There, there are things that have happened and transpired in my life, and you're going, well, you're a pastor's wife. It shouldn't be that hard for you. I'm just as much of an emotional being as everybody else in this room. And there are things that have transpired over my life that I have to choose daily to walk in forgiveness. Not because I don't forgive the person, because in my heart I truly believe I forgive the person, but also because... We do have a brain that reminds us of things, and it's like, or at 3 a.m., like, oh, thanks for that. 
because that's what I wanted to think of. But I have to make the choice, head to heart. Lord, I choose forgiveness because I already chose it a while ago. And just as he forgave us, I will walk in forgiveness. So I really encourage you, write those questions down. Look at those questions this week. Go back to the verse in Luke 17 where, it taught, where Jesus is teaching his disciples about forgiveness. Even if they sin against you seven times a day and seven times they come back saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Must. This is a life lesson that we each need to carry. So, Pastor, will you come and pray for us this morning? Father God, I pray right now that these truths would affect us. Lord, I thank you for the boldness and the honesty of my wife, God, in sharing her own experiences, Lord, and, and I pray right now, God, that every detail, every scripture read this morning, every question asked, every uh, point made would affect our hearts, Lord, that you would help us to recall some things that definitely need to be addressed. And Lord, when that person walks by us and we're immediately responding in our minds and our hearts to something that happened to us or a song comes on the radio or whatever it is, God, when we're driving somewhere, we drive by a location, we're instantly reminded of a moment in our life that has caused us great pain and we're still struggling with forgiving them. I pray, God, that you would give us the strength to do so because you first forgave us. You gave us a path. You gave us a way. You gave us the ability because of your love for us first. We have the ability to be empowered to love others the same way. Lord, as we forgive, may we find freedom in incredible ways. Today, Lord, I ask, the people here and the people watching online and everywhere else, that they would experience the freedom of forgiveness and that maybe, just maybe, some significant way the person that they have forgiven would know that they were forgiven and it would change their life too. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.